This is Larry Stein with the Texas A&M MicroLife Extension Service. Today we're going to teach you how to do the Texas Inlay Quark Graft. This is a graft that was perfected by extension horticulturists across our state back in the 50s and continues today. This method was used to top work native trees and improve native pecan bottoms to improve varieties. This technique involves that you secure a few simple materials. In years past, we didn't have the luxury of having aluminum foil and plastic bags, and we actually had to rely on wax melters and carry these up into the trees, and so that was a big challenge. So today, though, we figured out we can use aluminum foil and plastic bag. Of course, you need some dormant craft wood, which we're showing you on top of the foil. And this graft wood is cut back in January, kept in the crisper in the refrigerator, and held until prime grafting season, which is typically about the middle of April to about the middle of May. You need some kind of saw, a shears, you need a very sharp knife, you need some tape, some kind of budding or grafting tape, a little bit of glue, and then if you're going to attach the, the graft with nails, you need a hammer and small wire gauge nails. Most critical of all of these tools that you have here is the grafting wood. It needs to be very dormant. It needs to be have collected on time. The other thing is a very sharp knife. A lot of people have the issue that a sharp knife is what causes the issues. But in most cases, it's the dull knife which causes the problems. Because with a dull knife, you're straining extremely hard and oftentimes you slip, and that's when you cut yourself. I often tell people that they need one more thing. I tell people it's well and good to have all these materials and the know-how to go out there and do it, but when you go out there, my friends, you have to have the confidence that you can make it work. If you don't believe it's going to grow, <laughs> it's kind of my opinion, it's probably not going to grow. So study the technique. And watch, follow along, we'll teach you how to do it, and then go out there with confidence and make these trees grow. Now the reason we graft trees is because fruit trees do not come true from seed. So you plant a pecan, you get a nice pecan seedling, but that pecan seedling does not come true to type. And so over the years people have had trees come up that were undesired variety or the squirrels planted a tree, or the grass broke off, and so they're left with a non-improved variety. And so those are the reasons that people like to know how to graft trees. So here is an ideal pecan seedling that can be inlay bark grafted. We think the ideal size tree is about the size of a Coke can. Wherever that tree is about the size of a Coke can is the ideal place to place an inlay bark graft. So the first thing you do is cut the tree off, cut the tree off with a saw, chainsaw, whatever. And when you cut it off, you're going to cut it off at a desired height to do the graft. Realize that if you're in a native pecan bottom that you have to work these trees off a ladder or a pickup truck to keep the deer and cows from grazing them off. So your height that you put the graft depends on the size of the tree as well as the management conditions of the particular orchard or bottom, etc. Notice that when you cut the tree off, a tree is not perfectly round. So if you notice on the left side of the tree here, the tree is kind of flat. And so that is the ideal side to put the graft. Because where you have a flat side, you can get very good contact between the stock and the scion. You know, when you put the scion, which is the graft on there, it needs to fit very flat to the tree. And so a flat spot makes that possible. Once we make the cut, saw the tree off, we kind of clean up the top of the cut because if you used a chainsaw, etc. So you can just clean it up lightly. You don't have to take a whole lot off. The next thing we do is on the flat side of the tree, we will go ahead and pare it down a bit. We want to get down to white wood. The white wood is much easier to cut through than the rough gray and brown bark, and so that's why we pare it down. We want to be careful, though, that we keep the bark as thick as possible. 
because the bark is what's going to hold the graft in place. So now we're ready to work on our graft stick. Here's an ideal size graft stick. It has four plump buds. Notice that the end of this wood was not sealed. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut the end of the wood off so that we get down to fresh green tissue. The next thing we need to do is we need to cut into the graft stick so that we create a flat spot that we can push between the bark and the wood of the stock tree. And so notice how we hold a knife in our hand. You hold it in the palm of your hand, not with your fingers. You get the greatest strength from your palm. You want to cut down to the middle of the stick and then all the way out. And it's a slanted cut as you go in. And then the straight cut going to the end of the stick is as straight as possible. So here we're starting the cut. Here we're halfway into the cut. And then here would be the completed cut. So it slants down on the right end. And then the long cut is as straight and flat as possible. Then we turn the stick over and we make a slight cut on the back. We call that a chisel cut. So in other words, the stick now looks like a chisel so that it will fit between the bark and the wood. So here's a side view of the graft stick. Notice the slant as we start to make the cut, but then notice how straight the cut is till the end. And so it's very critical that you get that cut as straight and as, as possible in sort of, in, so that you get excellent contact between the stick and the stock that you're going to put it on. So now we hold our graft stick on, a st on the stock or the tree that we're grafting and we're going to cut into the bark along the side of the graft stick. We want to hold our knife straight up and down. We don't want to curve the knife in. We want it to be straight. So you make the cut on one side and you move your fingers to the other side of the graft stick, being careful not to move it. And then you're going to make the same exact cut on the opposite side. And again, you want that cut to be as straight as possible along the edge of the stick. So here we are tracing that cut. And so once we've made those cuts, you will now notice that the little sliver of bark peels open. See how the bark is peeling open there with our knife? And you notice how we're pushing the stick in between the bark and the wood. And so that's where the graft gets the name inlay because we're laying it in there between the bark and the wood. And so you push the graft down to where you had started to, do, to make your knife cuts, and then you're going to fasten it to the tree. So now you can either fasten it to the tree with, say, tape. You can do budding or grafting tape. Some people use electrical tape. You could use duct tape if you want it. Uh, some people like to nail them in. I personally like to nail them in. Here we're showing you the back side of the graft. So you see how the slanted end is not all the way flush with the trunk of the tree. It's actually sticking up a bit. So now we've made our attachment of the stick to the tree. In this case, we've used nails. Notice the top nail is placed directly in the bark in the little graft stick. In the second one, we've cut off half the bark flap and the nail goes into the bark flap as well as to the graft stick. Again, you could use tape at this point if you would like. But once we have it secure, the next thing we have to do is protect it to the elements. And so what we do is we use aluminum foil. Here is aluminum foil. Put the shiny side out. And that reflects sun, keeps the temperature down. Ideal callus formation occurs at about 85 degrees. So here we're completing that, <clears throat> putting the foil on. Notice that we're not crimping it in behind the graft stick. Here is the completed foil then. And notice how it's kind of loose back to the back of the bud. In other words, it's not crimped down under that slanted part where we left the stick. So once we have the foil in place, we're ready to place the plastic bag. So you cut the corner off a poly bag, 
slip it down over the graph stick. So we slip it down over the graph stick, the poly bag, and then we're going to tie off that bag. That bag is going to hold in moisture and also allow for gas exchange. This keeps the graph from drying out during the healing process. So here we are making the tie at the top, right below the first set of buds. And then we're going to go down and make the same tie where the bag is covered by foil. You know, you're just covering what's covered by foil when we tie it off. And then the last step of the technique is to seal the end with glue. So in this case, we're just putting a drop of glue at the top. If you had sealed your wood prior to doing when you collected the graft wood, then you would be good to go and you wouldn't have to do this part. Now we want this graft then to sit here a minimum, a minimum of two to three weeks. So here's the completed graft now. We seal the end and we want the graft to sit there two, three, could be four weeks. And in that time frame then, we're hoping that we get new, new xylem and phloem. We get a strong union between the little piece of graft wood and the tree. And so we want the graft to sit there for a while so that union can indeed take place. So after the graft has healed over, say three to four weeks, the buds are going to start to push. It's going to look very much like this situation where the buds start to come out strong. <clears throat> Notice that we have two, two graft sticks on this particular tree. You can do that. Most cases though, one, one graft stick is usually all that you need. In this case here, we've unwrapped the graft now. We've taken the, the foil and poly bag off, and you can see the white callus tissue around the top of the tree. That's what's critical for that has to happen for the graft to take place. And so if you have one that doesn't take, you go ahead and take that off and see if you have that callus. And if you don't, and you're toward the end of the grafting season, then you have the chance to go in there and put another graft on the tree. Typically, once you have a graft that's growing, you're going to brace the graft. Notice the nail to the left of the left of the tree there. That's a nail that held up a brace board. So typically, these grafts are very susceptible wind blowing them out, and so it's not uncommon to put a brace board and you actually nail it into the tree. Here's a situation where we're looking at the side view of a graft. The graft has grown well, but it is not totally healed over the top. And so realize that the top has to totally heal, heal over before the graft is totally safe from blowout potential. Here we're showing you another graft. This is the year that the graft was done. This is in year one. You notice the brace board. Notice that we're taking off the aluminum foil that, in this case. Notice also that this particular graph was tied. It was not nailed in place, it was tied in place. Lastly, it's not uncommon for new graphs to grow really rapidly and you have the limbs snap on you. The good news in this case is that we still have the graft, original graft below where the tree is broke. So it's just a matter of cutting these broke limbs off and letting the graft continue to grow. So the inlay bark graft is a very good graft for converting seedling trees or trees which do not have a desired pecan, desirable pecan on them. So this technique can be used. This is a technique that involves both art as well as science. And realize that when you go out there to do your first one, you're going to feel like you're all thumbs. So realize practice makes perfect. And go out there with practice, and I think you will be surprised at how successful you can be. So and until next time, happening gardening, and good luck with your grafting.